I was born in the city of Guadalajara, which is in the state of Jalisco in Mexico. And I was born into you know, a small family, my mom, my dad, at the time my older brother, and later on my little brother came along. And I, I don't remember too much about my childhood there because I was, I was pretty young. I actually don't, I remember probably like one or two things. So home, I would say I have two homes. So my, my first home would be back where I grew up for most of my life. But my other home would be back in Mexico, back where I was born. Because that's, that's where most of my family is and that's where they still are. I, even though I haven't been able to see my family in a while, I know that they still, like they still think about me and they still are, are there for me if anything were to happen. So at Tufts, my home is, is here in my room. I just enjoy being around with my roommates. We do a lot of jokes and just say random stuff that we think is funny. And I also get to play around with the room and organize it the way I want it and set up lights and just play with little projects. I've broken a lot of things here, but then we fix them which is the fun part. We actually, these lights, we, we, pop, we pop the circuit. So all the lights went out and it was pitch black. Cause we, these yeah. <clears throat> the overhead ones? Yeah, the overhead lights, they all went out. So there's, on the wall, there's three, switch, three four switches, but three of them control the lights. And the fourth one, we have no idea what it does. So, we took the panel apart. We were trying to figure out whether that circuit worked or anything. And we accidentally touched something we weren't supposed to and uh, sparks flew. <laughs> and all of a sudden, all the lights went out. We were like in pitch, it was just dark. And um, thankfully, like I knew where the circuit breakers were. So we just turned the lights back on. Yeah, that was weird. <laughs> like my major ties in really well with what I like to play around with. Engineering is just something that I've like been drawn to. I've like cool mechanical things or just like amazing or any like electrical circuits. They just look like little little pieces on a little board and they do stuff. So it was Freshman year, first semester freshman year, and it was parents' weekend. And I really hadn't thought about my parents coming because I, I didn't think it was possible. You know, uh, I didn't think my mom could travel on a plane. So I really wasn't expecting anything. And I get a Snapchat, and it's my mom in front of the, the jumbo, the, the jumbo of the elephant statue is a snapchat of her in front of it and i was just so confused at that at that moment i'm like like what like did, did she like photoshop this or something and she texted me later that she was on campus and i was just like i don't know i didn't know what to think i was in a meeting and when i got the text that she told me to come outside so i walked outside anderson and i saw my mom like in the main lobby area and I just, I hugged her, but at, at the same time, I was like, it felt surreal to have my mom visit me in college. When I, I honestly thought like, I wouldn't be able to see her come, like see me in college until I was a graduating senior. But then we, we walked outside and I saw my dad. And it had been, I think six years since I'd seen my dad. So that was even more like amazing, like I, I it just, it felt like a dream. You know, it felt so odd to like finally see my dad. I remember I, I, I noticed that, you know, he, he had aged. That's like the first thing I noticed. He, you know, his, his face is a more wrinkly. I, I, I don't know why, but like the first thing I did when I saw him, I was, I was like really close and I just kind of like touched his face to like, you know, see if it was real, if that like, I'm like, am I really seeing my dad after so many years? And then, oh, I'm getting all teared up now, but 
I, I hugged him and I don't know, it was just, it was just like the best surprise I could ever get. It, so it was the summer of 2004 and my mom told, told us that we were going to go to Disneyland. So when my mom broke the news to us, to my brothers and I, we, you know, we were, we were ecstatic. We were so happy because we had, we were going to go to a place that we had only heard about on television that, you know, it was like a, a dreamland with all our favorite cartoon characters. And, you know, we were just so, so happy, so excited. When we got to the border, I remember my mom like reminding us to like reminding us of like where we were going and you know of course that didn't make I just we all just kind of screamed out you know we're going to Disneyland and like how could we forget we were going to Disneyland and on like crossing the border uh, the the immigration the immigrations police they like they they questioned us you know where are you going and we all screamed out in unison Disneyland because we you know we were so excited and we we made it through. We were very lucky. We we crossed with a, a passport visa. You know, a passport and a visa as tourists. But what we didn't know is that we'd we'd be staying there. Not not long after we crossed, we my mom broke the, the news to us that we weren't actually going to be going to Disneyland. You know, we we were going to move there and at the time you know, being seven years old, I was devastated. I, you know, I, I, I cried. I cried a lot. My brothers, we all cried. You know, we didn't understand what was going on. But in reality, we, we were moving to a, a new, a different dreamland, to the United States, which was, you know, kind of in our minds and to everyone else, just like a, a, a place where you could come and make a new life and succeed and get a good education. So I am an undocumented immigrant. As I said, we, we came with a passport and a visa, but we stayed past its expiration date. And after that expiration date, we became undocumented. And we, thinking back, we were actually very, very lucky to come the way we did. We crossed through the actual border you know, legally, but not not everyone has that opportunity. We were able to, go to we were able to go to a public school that just just immediately after we moved in and when school started, we we got enrolled into a, a school because my mom found out that they didn't require a social security number at the time. I don't know if they do now. So I started the second grade here in the United States. I remember not knowing any English. The only English I knew was from a little, a little nursery rhyme that they t they taught us back in Mexico. Pollito, chicken, gallina, hen, lapis, pencil, y pluma, pen, and then it keeps going. So I knew, you know, I knew chicken, I knew pencil, I knew pen, and that's uh, that's about it. <laughs> so if I, I I knew hi, I knew I, hi. So I was kind of thrown into uh, an environment where I, everyone was speaking gibberish. I was like a little kid, I was lost, completely lost. Teachers speaking gibberish, all my classmates were speaking gibberish. But thankfully my teacher, my second grade teacher knew just a little bit of Spanish. And with that Spanish she was able to tell me, you know, you can do your work in, in Spanish. So I, so she didn't force me to do like English right away. She let me kind of slowly glide into the language and pick it up. Probably like a week later after school started, I had, I made, I made a friend who was, I think, in the exact same situation as me. He knew absolutely no English, just Spanish, but he was my buddy because we could actually talk to each other. Getting to high school where it really hits you is, you know, colleges. So everyone, you know, all your friends are all, you know, some are looking to go into college. Not all undocumented immigrants can apply to, to colleges. You know, there's barriers 
uh, well, one is social security numbers. Some, some schools require a social, secur social security number. Some schools consider them international students. So that, you know, like significantly reduces the, reduces the amount of financial aid they can get. And they also don't even consider them domestic students. Um, thankfully, just recently, just when my older brother was in high school, they had passed the, the DREAM Act, which was what allowed him to apply to colleges and be able to get into a college. And by the time I was a senior and junior, that was already in place. But I, I still knew that not every school that I applied to would take me. Like the only schools that give you full financial aid and the schools that take, you know, undocumented immigrants or just anyone with low income level and give them, you know, pay for the entire schooling are the, you know, the private institutions, the top schools in the nation. And it's not easy to get into those schools. So being undocumented kind of forced me to be the best. My mom always reminded me that I, I always had to try harder than everyone else because I was at a disadvantage you know, because of my status, but I kind of like promised my mom that I'd get into a college that, where she wouldn't have to pay anything. That was kind of my goal, to go to somewhere where my mom doesn't have to pay like a single dollar. There were still barriers. In, in applying to colleges, I had to be selective about which schools I could apply to. Some schools are very, very, although they accepted undocumented immigrants, they're very unfriendly towards them. Well, when it comes to looking forward, I have to think about what kinds of things I can and can't do. For example, I can't do any government funding, anything that's government funded. So research, I have to be kind of selective about what I can and can't do. And also internships. Oh, thankfully, I have, I have DACA, which is not as secure right now because of the current administration. But I, that's, that's allowed me to possibly get an internship or a job and l allow me to work, which is something that I didn't have before. Being, you know, an undocumented immigrant, my, my experience in, in no way, shape or form covers or summarizes the experience of every undocumented immigrant because there's immigrants from every country in the world and everyone has a unique experience. But I've come to terms and acknowledged how my experience has allowed me to get here. And I've just been more open talking to people. I, which I think is good, because I don't completely, I don't hide it anymore. College has been like a just a big thing of many first experiences. I'm sure that's a lot for I'm sure a lot of people have also experienced that. So one thing was or like a big thing was my first my first phone because I never really ha I never had a phone all of middle school high school. I know it sounds kind of crazy at this day and age, but you can do it. I survived without it. First laptop coming. I, I paid, I, you know, bought a laptop because I, I thought that I need one, and I do need one. Um, it's the first time seeing a lot of snow, which is I thought has been amazing. First time getting, well, being away from home for such a long time, which is a big one, because I I'd always been home with my with my mom, my little brother. Going, being away from home was both good and bad. Well, not bad. There's just like, you know, pros and cons for me. I, I wanted to go somewhere new. So it was a, a great place to be because I was kind of on my own, doing what I wanted. I had a lot of fun. But I was also missing, you know, the community that I was in, the, the Mexican food, which I still kind of miss. I like pozole and mole and just tortillas in general. Um, Tamales, you can't miss tamales. Back home, I want to be remembered as someone 
don't know, I just want to be remembered as a, a good friend, as someone that just kind of like to have fun and laugh and I don't have like many big requests about what I want to be remembered. Um, growing up, maybe in my field, I, I kind of dream about inventing something or coming up with something amazing or just creating something that people use and can really value. Actually, there's one thing, I know it's, it's kind of weird, but I don't know why I think about this, oft, not often, but I think about this. So, kind of like a dream of mine is maybe later on when I'm older, maybe I have a family or something. I know it sounds kind of dumb to some people, but just to be able to take my family to a restaurant or to some place and you know, be able to tell them that they can order anything. It's just, you know, tell them that they can order something without having to worry about how much it costs. So they can order based on what they want to try, whether it be good or bad. That's a weird dream of mine. Um, just a question out of curiosity. Have you been to Disneyland? I have. Yeah, we, we ended up going later on. My mom made, up, made it up to us then. It was amazing, you know. It was just... Also, like, when it comes to Disneyland and theme parks, my mom is all about getting onto every single ride. So we'd like pack sandwiches and in a big backpack and just go on the park and, you know, ride, 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 ride until we ride all the rides. And she also wouldn't let us not get on the rides. So <laughs> even if I cried, but I think that helped because it kind of, now I just love roller coasters and I just love doing things that might seem kind of scary or kind of crazy. And, but she did make it, make it up to us. We've gone probably like two or three times, maybe four. Yeah.